What's up, Ernie? What's, What's up, up What's up, Ernie? 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 What's up, my name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. 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 What are you? What are you? What are you? A human. Okay, so Goku. Um, go on. Yes, go on. Don't try to think of Goku's Gohan's dad. Hey guys, welcome to Hive Mind. 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 Let's check it out. It's gonna be alright. I'm Namana. I'm here with Psych, Bubble Po, and our special guest, Pax Banner, today. <laughs> and so, uh, in game, you know, we talk about the future. We see how optimistic or pessimistic we are. We try to have a nice discussion about it. But before we jump into the main topic, let's talk to Hax Banner and sort of just get, like, we'll put the community spotlight on you today. And I want to get your general feelings for the future. So, so how are you feeling? I'm I'm generally positive about the future. I'm a technologist, so I you know I'm one of those people who thinks we can probably solve a lot of problems with appropriate use of technology. I do have some reservations about kind of the way we've been uh, heading recently, though, uh, with how um, things are kind of getting dumbed down. Like, so we have this advanced technology we all use now, but um, kind of like with the rise of the iPhone and the iPad, all that super high tech is kind of being hidden from the users and they're not as uh, mm. savvy about what's, what's making that. And I, I fear for that of like a future where people uh, don't know what they're, how they are uh, operating the world. And uh, maybe there's only like a high tier of people who have that understanding and can control those other people that way. Um, that's that's kind of the, the negative side of the future I see of the of the technology saving us and taking us to a greater place. <laughs> Isn't that sort of inevitable? Because like no one human can contain all of that knowledge. And so it, as the world gets more complex, it has to be spread out, right? Like no one person can make a pencil. We're in a tribe of, of billions at this point, right? So like you, 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 don't, you don't have to be self-sufficient. So we're all going to be different, right? And my brain is going to specialize in a different area than you. If we all have to specialize in understanding how our computers work, then we're not going to be different enough to like a diverse enough to sort of grow as a society. We'll be too similar. So shouldn't we rely on I, each other I as see we where spread out? From there. Specializing too much becomes kind of isolates you, right? Um, if everyone kind of has some basic knowledge that is common, um, even even for you know, uh, fairly complex things. I think that kind of keeps us all in the same uh, space as we're trying to expand and innovate. If an example of what you're talking about with the magic of technology not being known, I feel like a key here is assumptions that people make about how the technology is operating. So, for example, Google search, when people are searching, they don't really understand necessarily that the things that they're being shown or Facebook news, when you're getting your news from those sources, are those right. kinds Th of things those are the that you're talking symptoms. Yeah, those are the symptoms of where I see that happening is that uh, because you don't understand uh, how that search engine is using no. your data, like you don't uh, know how to protect your privacy that way because it's not, you know, like a, the systems involved aren't something you have any uh, knowledge of. I think that causes you to be kind of weak in that way. And then those people that do understand that stuff can kind of prey on you. What do you think the solutions are to this? Because new technologies are coming about all the time. Like, how do we standardize this type of information sharing so that, like, everybody kind of knows how stuff works? I mean, I think one of the things that's coming around, and we probably might talk about it a little bit more, is, like, augmenting the human brain, right? Like, right now, it may seem daunting to understand all the technology that's out there right now. But Whoa, soon shit. we'll be able to access that kind of stuff almost instantaneously as if it was just something we learned, right? 
so that that data and that information and that knowledge, even the skill will be there um, for you to access. And the point will be more about you seeking it out, right, than, than um, uh, having to train or spend a lot of your time uh, How far uh, off do you think that, that is? I would say... Joey, can you pack up? Okay, I'm man. drunk! Just stay... Jesus Christ, you didn't turn your... Nobody fucking cares. Oh, we're still in the public. We're going to get through it and move on to the other world in a second. Yeah, that's, I think, I think we should, we should go to a, a, uh. Yeah, we should, we should move on to that, but we got to get out of this public room. Uh, All right. All right. So So let's go to our special room. Who's going to drop? I'll drop a warning over here. Seeing the peace, the light in eyes. All right. Yeah, we're all moving into this portal. Don't go too far. We're going to try and stay together. So now we're transitioning into our main topic, which is the hive mind. And where did we yeah. leave off? Well, we kind of wanted well, to talk about what it was, right? We want to, because the, the word hive mind is kind of a, like, it's, it's a, it's a ambiguous word. It's kind of vague. Um, and so like, I, I think we kind of want to establish like what, like what it is that we're talking about. Like if our, if we've got a hive mind, does that mean that we're all talking telepathically? Does it mean that we are just linked in some other way or does it mean it or is it something else going on is there like a, a separate hive mind that's like conscious separate from us like what are what are we talking about i mean i think we're going to use the word a couple different ways like the way that i've conceptualized it is like a brain is made out of a series of neurons that are all connected and then the hive mind is all of our brains being connected and creating a bigger brain on top of that so sort of like zooming out to the next layer where all of humanity is one giant brain yeah, yeah. so communication is the important part of that like the, the right. better or faster that is but i think another part of that that's interesting is like uh, is a neuron conscious of what the brain is doing probably not right so we may not be conscious of what this hive mind is on the video uh one of the things that i found a good analogy is i think about how bees have evolved or a school of fish has evolved to move as one unit and the kind of proposal that 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 the hive mind in general is potentially a next evolution of us just like if we're ants compared to you know some kind of higher level uh power or something or higher you know further along organism or something like those are two different things right because like in a brain, like the neuron presumably isn't aware, like isn't really uh, quote unquote aware of what the rest of the brain is doing. But in a swarm like that, in, in like a beehive or, or things like that, where there's swarm intelligence happening, like that, uh, the, the individuals are aware of the group's movements. Yeah. I just want to add in that we already have like a good kind of uh, example of a hive mind with humans. And that's the military, if you think about it. Military okay, all comes down from the Pentagon puts down what they want to their to the commanders, put down what they want to their commanders, so on and so forth. And this entire ma- amalgamation of people are moving towards one objective. So let's let's change the definition a little bit. Like that doesn't quite fit my definition because it's centralized, yeah, it's, right? There's someone in control. It's yeah, almost like the queen bee in is in control of all the. Hierarchy. Well, that's like the bee thing. Is like there's the queen bee, and then every all the other bees move in support of the queen bee. The queen bee is not actually doing any calculating. They're not commanding the drones, right? The drones yep. end up getting a lot done on their own, right? They sort of, uh, without being aware of what they're doing. Like the the great example was like, um, you know, moving the hive, like to to go find a new hive. They all have to like go off in different directions figure out where the best location is. You're taking a, a bunch of factors, like they need to have the right resources around, be sheltered from the environment oh, no, in whatever that's, way. That's also the military because the, the hive in general makes the decision we need to move from location A to location B. In the military, there's a decision made move from location A to location B. We don't yeah. just, like, the Pentagon doesn't say move to this location. No, like, the people so, on the ground so... send out a torch party, and the torch party goes, okay, this place is defensible, <laughs> We have good resources. And the torch party goes back like, okay, we found this place. Nomono's idea of a hive mind is more of like a telepathic kind of thing where everyone's connected together. And in which that case, no, the military isn't it. Yeah, it has to be decentralized. 
like there's also, linear people have, information wait. processing and there's collective information processing and so like one of so so mm -hmm. certain processes are linear Process. especially if there's a hierarchy Process. but then collective is when Process. there's like individual nodes like like in your brain Process. also like so like that's that's an example of collective information processing because okay so I, we're, like just it's collective high mind is the, the topic I, yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, okay. For for now, yeah, this is what something we struggled with is the definition of hive mind. So that's definitely yeah. like you're not the like if, if people here are hearing us say hive mind and we all have different conceptions. I think that's important to realize that all of even when the four of us were discussing this before the show, we realized that we had different uh, interpretations of what the the term meant. So I think it's an interesting, it's a normal thing to be wondering. I think about what what this. I could read I the wanna... definition. It's a large number of people who share their knowledge or opinions with one another regarded as producing either uncritical conformity or collective intelligence. Everybody's In that definition, the military would fit. What's interesting to me about the military example is, like, we have a lot of humans on this planet, and we haven't been able to communicate very quickly. Like, the Internet's relatively new, but we've had military for a long time. And the way we accomplish it is by having a hierarchy or, like, bigger nodes, right, where... You were saying like scouts will go up or squads they will communicate with someone and that information will go. And so we're yeah. able to make it work and we can move mass groups of people. But the thing that I'm the most looking forward to is sort of a completely decentralized where like it's it's more everyone's it's on a some shared kind of collective footing. transfer of knowledge. Yeah. Instead yeah, of I, think going that's off of that. key. I think that's part of the key of what I understand as a hive mind is that it's decentralized. That there's no one oh, uh, controlling figure, well, not the general or whatever. Right? There's, there. It's the, the collective is making the decision. Mm -hmm. I think part of the misunderstanding of hive minds is also from popular media. Like I think a video game StarCraft is the Zerg hive, but that's run by the Overlord. You know what I'm saying? Or wasn't there a race in Mass Effect yeah. that had that too? Yeah, and the Borg. So the uh, yeah. so this oh, yeah. is interesting too. Like uh, the, in pop culture, the hive mind is often regarded very negatively. Right? They're the yeah, bad guys, and yeah. and. You, you lose your individuality when you join the hive mind. Is that how you guys view it? It's, if we're talking about these kind of idea of brains and communication with one another and control, we, it sounds like some people disagree whether we'll be conscious of the fact that we're part of the hive mind or how much conscious control that we might have. But what are other characteristics that you guys see um, as part of the hive mind, if you can describe it and kind of help people paint an image of how it would operate in that kind of thing? I think I think one of the things that um, comes up with that is like in your B example is that the intelligence that's generated by this construct is greater than the intelligence of any individual, right? So if we see things coming out of human interaction that are, you just couldn't imagine a single person doing, right, or even a group of people doing, you know, that that doesn't seem like oh, that's beyond what a human. Uh, comprehends or achieves then then we're talking about a hive mind and it's exponential too so like if you have two people in a room there's like one point of contact they can have one conversation if you have three people in a room each pair of those people can have a conversation and there could be a group conversation and then you get to four and like the number grows exponentially and it gets huge and so like as soon as you get to 20 people in a room if, if they could all effectively communicate with each other you're having thousands of conversations happening. So it's, it's the, the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts or whatever that phrase is, where you're not mm. just adding, it's not like a linear thing where like you add 10 humans into a room and that's 10 times smarter. It might be hundreds or thousands of times smarter if communication is like rapid and, and oh clean. My gosh, my... Kind of connected to the military thing and like the speed of communication. Have you guys heard of the experiment where they cut, cut a person's two hemispheres, they uh, severed the connection? Or do they just slow it down? Either way, so there's a lot of information that goes between the two sides of your brain. But if you, oh yeah, if you sever it, it has to go around and it slows down the communication in the brain. And then you have two different personalities in the same brain, which is crazy to me. So you have like two different people in there. As soon as you put a very fast broadband connection between them, you lose one of them loses its consciousness. So the understanding I have, if we had enough connections, enough past connections between people's brains, I think we'd completely lose our own Would we see our own minds and we'd just be part of a collective brain. Of I think that's why the hive minds are always seen as the villains. They're always seen as the evil ones, especially in things like Star Trek, because like the Borg, like that was literally their threat. 
if you became one of the Borg, you, your individuality was completely eliminated. Like, you just didn't have that anymore. Um, or you would so be in Rick and Morty. But see, I, I don't buy that it's a bad thing. I, th- I think I think Rick and Morty is actually a good example of. Wasn't Unity a, a good person? I forget how, what, what. Yeah, the kind of good. Unity was pretty cool, <laughs> but like yeah. still eliminated the personalities of the person that Unity inhabited. So is that absolutely necessary, you guys? Because like I, I don't understand why we have to make that jump. That as soon as you form a network, then the individuals no longer matter. Why, why can't because both we don't know if it will. at the same time? That's kind of an extreme example where we all become telepathically connected and uh, and and we either lose our personalities or we don't. Let's use a less extreme example of an like an example where we're all connected in some way, but it's not an immediate connection and it's not a telepathic connection, but we have a connection of some kind. And let's look at like whether that reduces our personality because of being connected a little bit reduces our personality then we can extrapolate that being connected completely will eliminate our personality. So, so do you think that like, the internet that's... led to that? Um, I mean, I, okay, so I, I have my experiences of being an individual on the internet. Um, I, I think it's definitely fair to say that, like, being part of a hive, you know, you're going to be influenced just as, and you're going to influence that hive, but I, at least in my personal experience, like ju- with all this input coming in from uh, all sorts of different directions and me having access to all sorts of different knowledge bases, um, I, I don't I don't experience myself as being less of an individual and I don't mm. experience myself as being like uh, more conf- like confined or bound to what other people say generally when i that like the more connection the more information i am exposed to the more free i am i feel to kind of go my own direction because mm. like then it kind of suggests that oh all these different uh directions are available to me as a thinking being and so i have a freedom to navigate among them uh rather than being pulled there one way or the other um I, although that happens well, by I, other I, forces uh, I, I think some things. of this, the negativity that comes around the thinking of the hive mind is because, like we talked about before, one of the definitions is that this thing is going to be superior to us, right? It's going to be mm. a higher intelligence than us. So hopefully it'll be benevolent, but it doesn't have to be. And we won't have any control over it because it'll be more powerful than us, right? With so that's why it's, it's easy to think of it negatively, right? <laughs> Well, maybe, though, if it's an emergent property, like if it's not something we built, but it's something that emerges from our co- collectivity just by virtue of us being connected to each other, then we're not going to be architect. Like We're not going to be the architects. We are just going to be the host, uh, the collective host of this thing. Do you think it's going to be able to talk to us and make decisions about us as individuals? I would imagine that in order for it to work, unless we completely change our humanity that that's how we would we would communicate with it it would communicate to us and that's how it would work Mm. but it would have a higher you know it would have more control because it would be superior it would know it would think faster better than us it would be controlling a lot of the systems probably in the world just because it's so you know intelligent when you're talking about us completely losing our individual like what what's going to happen i think of it as like a spectrum so like you can be completely isolated and you know, be raised in the woods alone, and not, and never be introduced in, to society. And I imagine you'd be completely dysfunctional, or you could be completely on the other side, where you're a total conformist, I guess, and you never have an original thought, and you're just always mimicking the people around you. And at that point, like, I don't know how much of an individual you are, but we're all somewhere in the middle, right? We're a social species. We have our own like individuality that's built up of connecting with all these different people around us. And I think I sort of agree with you that the hive mind is going to be a new connection, right? Like I might have a hundred people in my tribe and now I might have this new tool where I can communicate with that, with the whole mass, right? So it eats up a certain percentage of the resources in my brain. I don't have to give up complete power control to it. I don't have to be obligated to listen to what the hive mind says, but I I'm in open communication with it, right? Like I feel like that's where the, you can bridge those two, two ideas and not lose your individuality but still have a hive mind where we're all in communication. I, I just found another uh, perspective here. We're talking about examples of the hive mind and the army. If you look at the process of evolution where single cells 
started to become a, a collective multicellular being. And so you have, you have a hive mind situation there. And then I read an interesting quote years ago. You might be familiar with it. It said, when the internet hit, the world started to gain a nervous system. So you can see an evolution mm. of single cells joining into multicellular items yeah. with a central <laughs> nervous system control and the internet as a way of connecting individual humans with their nervous system where they can all react, respond, and get knowledge at the same time and with their specialties like organs and cells react. And another perspective mm. I would add to this, we talk about the hive mind. In our own bodies, we are outnumbered by non-human cells 10 to 1, the proteins and the uh, bacteria. They live in your skin. They line your intestines. They're smaller. But every week, if you read medical and technological uh, news, they're finding your intestinal and gut bacteria is tying it to Parkinson's, tying it to mood, tying it to immune Depression. systems. So... Mm -hmm. These uh, these bacteria, they, there's innumerable types, but they have their own criteria. They do things for us. They harm us. Many are mostly neutral, but they're at work. And then, of course, you realize with bacterial infections and things, you try to put an antibiotic, they'll form a microfilm. So you have this thing like, oh, we're under trouble. So we all collect together these bacteria, wherever they are, and they make a microfilm that's impenetrable to uh, uh, antibiotics. So in one case, you've got a hive mind occupying your own body within your own body mm -hmm. and they actually outnumber mm -hmm. your cells 10 to 1 it's kind of an interesting concept there so you can see this on every level going to universal individuals to cells and cells controlling our behavior uh, these these Using alien this, cells as well yeah even though we're composed of all these different uh, the different types of cells our own perception is limited by the information that we have available to us and the information that we have access to so there's a lot of processes in our body that happen that we don't have access to that information. Like we can't detect what's going on inside of every individual One. cell. Yes. And similarly, um, similarly, like whatever <laughs> our hive mind entity ends up being, like it might not have access to the information about, about what's going on inside us as individuals. And so it might be separated from us just by an information layer of some kind, which is why it might I don't know. Would would that would probably whatever that interface ends up being is probably going to yes. be the shape of and, how we interact with it and and where it exists to us and in relation to us. Yeah, yeah. There's a part of the hive mind that is basically unconscious potentially, and like we're not. And I think there's a gradient, so like we're not conscious of the physiological processes going on in our bodies, but there's still even with our behaviors, we're not completely conscious of all the processes that go into deciding to do a behavior like fight and flight response right. and automatic responses. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good segue to the question of control over the hive mind, especially I'm most interested in how control plays a role for us. If we're part of the hive mind, we have a conception of what free will and behavior and cho choice and things like that already are. Are there already current um, ways that those things are affected unconsciously that we don't even realize? And is that going to evolve into the control mechanisms of the hive mind? So like in the, the body example, our gut bacteria actually do have some form of control, right? Like they, they are changing some, like we're just learning now that it, it will change you in some way. And so like when we think about the hive mind that's going to be above us, like is, so like the obvious thing is, we all control it, right? Like there's a tiny percentage of our influence on it, but then there is effectively, there could be bigger nodes of control, like a government or somebody who could somehow hack the system. Like I, you could think of a lot of ways for people to, or an AI, for example, like is the hive mind only going to have human minds or will there be like AI intelligences in there yeah. that have some form of control? Is that sort of what you're spelling out? basically analogous to the mitochondria like you know cells exist within systems of control you know that are controlling where the cells are going and things like that so governments and and things like that that control the parameters of some of our behaviors is that the same kind of way that the cells exist and we have one of those systems of control what, what's your ideal here hack spanner like what do you think is the ideal form of control like what should what do you want it to look like well i mean the, to use the gut bacteria example again if we are kind of like their spaceships and they're all like <clears throat> billions of them there in, in my gut and they're driving me to like go to the 7-eleven and get a big gulp 
and drink it because they want that in you know, a sugar or whatever, <laughs> then then that sounds ideal, right? Like they're they're driving me. I'm their hive mind and they're driving me to do what they want. Right. So like that kind of hive mind sounds great. Like like intelligent spaceships or like the whole earth is like some kind of intelligent machine right. that we all put input into and it keeps us alive and you know lets us prosper. The, that sounds the, like a good, about a good way goal. to go. Your gut bacteria triggered a cognition, maybe a craving for sugar, but then you decided to go to 7-Eleven for a big gulp, which is a company and a product that is linked right. to that underlying. That's the key here. That's the question of control <laughs> that I'm really trying to get at is well, that's, how, I mean, influence will that. Marble. I think it's, it's impossible to like answer that question without knowing like what the sphere, what is that called? The sphere of activity or the playing field or, or whatever it is that this high that mind domain. is going to operate in yeah it's domain yeah it's domain of of operation like is it going to exist in a space where it will even like have the same concept for economics that we do or, or even life like maybe maybe it has like in, in an entirely different like per, you know perception of uh, what life is or or uh, what the earth is or how you know what the earth well, is shaped like if it doesn't reside in physical space then then maybe it it like everything is a different shape and everything is has different sizes like there's so many unknowns here do people think that if we are participating in a hive mind like elon musk's Neuralink or whatever like that that there's going to be a kind of corporation a big corporation controlling it or do you think it thumbs up for that or thumbs down that you think it's going to be something uh, different. That's different to me. Depends on what point it in time. Nice the different. It would be nice for something different, but like everything else in the world now, these, the corporation runs the world. We think the government does, but the, the corporations tell the government what to say or what to think. I think what's scary about corporations to me in, the, in this metaphor that we're coming up with is that it represents too big of a node, right? Like, I look at it and I see it as too, too having too much power. It's not decentralized enough. It represents like too much influence, right? And that's like scary right. to me. Like well, I don't it's, trust it's, it. Doesn't there have to be a What's really brain? interesting about it too, though, is that uh, the corporation is the first kind of hive mind that's being recognized by our governments, right? Like it's yeah, it's a much bigger structure that has its own interests and its own direction. Um, that's not really the individuals that are running it, right? And has its own right. its own processes. That's the control that I'm scared of lurks in the shadows, right? It's the stuff that we're unaware of. It's the stuff that Facebook does that we're unaware of. And like the more transparent we can, be, the hive mind can be. I think the more, like that to me represents like the decentralized nature of it. Like we're not being somehow manipulated like against our will. Like Google's not just taking all of our data and then using it to take advantage of us. Like we understand what they're doing, and therefore we allow them to play in our hive mind or you know whatever it is. A perfect example of something that would be something like a hive mind is OPEC. You know, here's an what entity that? that OPEC, um, oil producers of the world kind of thing, they set a price for crude oil. So basically they get to screw everybody over. But the thing is, you know, it, it, it's basically um, – all these oil companies follow their lead. So they're the guys at the top. They decide things, and then it trickles down. And that's why you never see a sale on gas. You didn't see gas go down 20 cents a liter or 20, you know, a dollar a gallon for um, Black Friday. No, that stays put while everything else. Sony's having a sale on a 60-inch TV this week. Hitachi's having a sale on a 60-inch TV next week. Gas you know, is oil, any oil product stays constant and they make deals as so shell, all these oil companies, they all pitch in, they all agree with OPEC. This is how much oil is going to be. This is how much gasoline is going to be. Yep. I guess, where do we, where do you guys think this is going? Like what, what, if we're looking into the future, where is the hive mind? Like what, what paint, like, what do you think it's going to look? I, I feel like this is, this could easily be a step in the evolution evolutionary process so like if so we've you know our humans we've got our own evolutionary process but within the society that we've built and the the ecosystems that we've built um there have come along corp companies and corporations that are essentially just groups of humans working 
you know, working in a collective way to achieve their goals and everything, um, that could easily be seen as like a different, uh, as a different species, as a, uh, um, with, with an evolutionary path of their own. And right now they're in an ecosystem of, you know, capitalism, late capitalism, and that uh, is like basically, I mean, corporations or, or similar types of groups have been around for a long time, but this is when they really hit their stride and they're like dominating the world, but they're going to have to change shape somehow. Like the, I, I think we've talked about this before, like what we have right now as an economic system isn't long-term uh, you know, something's going to have to shift. There's always an ecological shift. And when that happens, uh, there's an evolutionary change. But it, you mentioned that these could be like prototypes. And I think that that's a, uh, an interesting way to look at it, um, especially from a, from a biological sense, because they're, they're, they're a pretty interesting melding of biological and technological, because they exist, they're made out of humans, but they're also made out of all sorts of different technology. And it's a, it's a, fusion between those things and maybe maybe it's just part of the evolutionary process of becoming like a better more sophisticated hive mind but like i think like you're i don't think it'll work like i know it's scary that like to think about like one corporation being in charge of the entire like hive mind of the earth but i don't think it'll work that way unless like everyone is involved or everyone has the ability to be involved because otherwise it's going to be too narrow of a like its interests are going to be too special it'll just be conflict yeah so and, and you're saying like everyone has to be included in some way i i think so like that's how it makes sense to me that it'll work like be, because of the conflicting interest thing if you if you would just have a bunch of different groups like all wanting different things like they're just you're never going to get something that uh, works on a on a global scale. I, I like where public is going with this because um, that may be why we don't have a hive mind of, of like a global hive mind is because of these conflicts, right? The, the yeah. one that works that is going to be beneficial to all can only form if everyone, if all the sub hive minds get together and agree on like common goals. There's a there's a solution to that, and the solution is the hive mind. If we were truly in a hive mind, we'd all understand each other's needs fully and completely. <laughs> yeah. And there would be no disagreement and there would be no misunderstanding and there would be equal understanding of all priorities and motives and needs mm. and mm. desires and all of that. And all of that would be shared and dispersed and we collectively all could figure out a solution. If we're using ourselves as an analogy, like that's, that's how my body functions. Like it's in synchronicity with itself. Like it yeah. understands itself. So, yeah, that's an interesting idea. Uh, to me, that's like have, almost. Have... You guys are almost talking about the singularity. To me, like you're talking about like when we get to that point where mm -hmm. we're in perfect communication, everyone agrees. That's singularity, and beyond that point, we can't see it from here. It, it's like yeah. that represents a new phase of, <laughs> in humanity. Um, I, yes. There were a couple other questions that you you've been going for a while. Sorry. Like this is just sort of like an anecdote i guess is like we we kind of like uh showed how it could potentially work in when we were just all like trying to get the problems and those ended up being the people who were interrupting what was going on in like the last room and mm. some in this room and we all just like agreed uh as like general consensus that this problem should be solved and this problem should be solved this way and i think that's how a uh good hive mind would operate i'm gonna actually disagree i i think that was a really dark thing because like, what we did is metaphorically kill them right we we decided to remove them from our <laughs> our hive mind right and that's through violence like we decided they don't have the right to exist like a true That's... hive mind would be if somehow we were able to merge with them, if, if we had some way of communicating with them to, I, I don't know, like to, to we come would to some kind of consensus. Our opinions and they would understand it. Our needs and wants. Yeah. Instantaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Or if a, it was a, be... it's just like a multicellular <laughs> organism, you know, the cells communicate to expel impurities, toxins, disease, you know, so we, they have mechanisms. They all, you know, they all. They all communicate light speed. Let's 
throw this out. Watch out yeah, for this. Yeah, I don't think it has to be that dark. I think it, as a microphone, <laughs> and it's obviously going to be clumsier than the actual like system, but I, I don't know. I think he's got a good point. If you're too uniform a system, too cooperative, you'd be too vulnerable to attack of some other organisms. So I think you kind of need, even if it's a hive, you'd need kind of fringe elements. Like a, ants are kind of a hive. Ants, bees, but they always have some some individuals that are going out and doing different things to try and find new paths. So yeah. I don't know. I think being too uniform is oh. always a danger. I would like to see those people be able to troll, but somehow not have that end the conversation, right? Like I had difficulty yeah. communicating while they're doing that. Yeah. And so that to me yeah. collapses yeah. the hive mind. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, there can be a fringe, but it's just the fringe exactly. can't break down the communication. Also, I think yeah. we're talking about evolution or like things competing against one another. And I think it's interesting because that also, I guess, conceptually, if we think that the hive mind is going to be something that is developing, um, I think that conceptually uh, having multiple hive minds that are competing against one, one another fits the paradigm of evolution that we're talking about, which is survival of the fittest. So there, in, in, in one way, if we're talking about this uh, process of evolution, then we it seems like uh, having multiple hive minds is almost a requirement to um, allow the one that survives the best and evolves the best to um, take hold or take place. Are, are you saying well, that we're going to have an arena where like Reddit is going to enter and then Facebook <laughs> on the other side and they're going to fucking duel it out? And only yeah, one like, it's only... Be, honestly, my, my, my opinion is that it's going to be Alexa versus Siri versus like Google <laughs> now or whatever. Like that's, those versus are the people humans. who are fighting it out. And that's. Who wants to compete against AI yeah. will have to come together. I mean, okay. So, <laughs> Popopo, do you ever say Alexa? <laughs> like, if do you I did it right. I mean, I, I just ordered one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, afraid I, to say Oculus. I have an Echo. I don't have it set up right now because I'm not in a place I can do okay. that. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I mean, not unless I can avoid it. I I, after it. our conversation, I ordered one, so now I will. Oh. Be, I, I, I call my computer because the... I, I don't want to answer anthropomorphize it, so I don't call the lecture. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> hack man, you can't. One. You're gonna have to stop doing that at some point. The computer is gonna become smarter than you, and like you're gonna be talking True. down to it. Like, oh, I don't want to acknowledge your well, individuality. I'll be like, computer, you be calling please. Alexa computer. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, uh, wait, like, was... you've been calling me computer. I, I'm, not, I'm you're gonna die now, or whatever. Yeah, don't forget, we need to watch our yeah. behavior around these the growing intelligences because they will right, remember. Right. Also, we prayed to the future god of a you know that, that might be controlling us all in the hive mind. So, just to warn everyone, you know, we. Oh yeah, we did that once. Uh, go ahead. I'm going to say it's a social philosopher, Ken Wilbur, and he, he calls it spirodynamics of social evolution. And what he essentially says is that you can see and it makes perfect sense when you look at history of the world, history of this country. Uh, people swing between collective stuff, like maybe a hive mind, and then to individual stuff. And it goes back and forth and it grows that way. And it's and each one is reacting to the excesses of the other. So like we you have like we had like a law and order society, law and religion, and then like capitalism came, and that was so individuals could break out of these kind of molds and create their own things and do things. Then you got the greens, which would be you know the socialist kind of things. Oh, there's too much excess environmental, and so we got to come together. And then he projects another step above that, where it'll be actually individuals who will be making more collective decisions for people. He uh, gave an example of a forest ranger or something, somebody with a global perspective, but doing individual decisions. And there's a couple steps after that, but it makes perfect sense. So it might be a Star Wars scenario where you got the hive or a, the Borg or whatever, and then a few individuals will break off. They had enough of this crap, and here's their solution to the excesses mm -hmm. that the collective people did. And then they'll go go crazy, mm -hmm. like capitalists or parts, and then people get together, wait a minute, we got to go in and fix this. You know, these guys are out of control now, making it miserable for the rest of us. And you can see that throughout yeah. history. Like they're difficult to quantify, but like the dynamic between the individual and the collective and the and the groups and like all between like one person and numbers of people, like that's been like that's kind of propagated like a whole yeah, bunch of different I, I systems throughout history. One of the things we're not thinking about is this thing, this, this hive mind is a mind, right? Just like we, our minds, it's going to evolve in itself, right? It's going to have its personality is going to change over time. Right. So we can't like think of it as like the Borg and it's always going to think that way. Right. Because over time, it'll become a whole new person, just like you did from being a child to being a teenager to growing up. You know, like all those changes right, you went right. through, this mind is going to do the same thing. Right. 
And that makes me sort of feel that we are in the hive mind right now, in a sense, right? Humanity is about these swings and we do it culturally and in different ways. It's like a giant conversation we're having. It's slow mm -hmm. and it's not brain to brain, but it's like we're taking steps in that direction and self-correcting. I mean, I think I think it could there's an argument to be made for that, because like if it's a, if it's a mind, it's processing information. And, and what we're doing all the time is communicating information. Like if we just think about it as pure, like conceptual manipulation and information flow like we're constantly doing that every every time we communicate an idea every time an idea reaches like something i say reaches your head creates an idea from that and then you your whole mind responds to that and then you send another output back at me and then there's an there's another idea activity happening there like each time that happens could be a node in that consciousness you know like it that seems possible to me too um, so I, I think we should start heading towards the end if you have some final thoughts. Uh, were there any other people we missed? Uh, wait, there's some a new robot back there that we didn't talk to. Slick Rick. Yeah, thanks. Uh, if we do develop this global consciousness, uh, one possible thing to be optimistic about is I will see people from all over the world really have much more in common. What I'm hoping is that we'll come to see how most of our wars are actually being fabricated by the military industrial complex for profit. And as we come together, we'll actually be able to counteract that and sort of eliminate most of the uh, organized conflicts that we have. Yeah, like I, with more transparency, I, like, I think that us communicating effectively is what, what I mean by transparency. And like, I sort of imagine VR chat in a way as like another tool in the hive mind, right? You're like, you talk about different people communicating here, here we are all in a room. We're shooting thoughts back and forth. Like it's still, we're, we're functioning it like the way we're used to. We're just embodying bodies and using body language, but this is like a new tool that we're shooting that body language over, you know, across the world. It's like an upgrade for the consciousness or whatever. I think that's why I'm most excited about uh, VR chat uh, specifically and VR as social VR is that it's renewing our ability to communicate almost like we're in person. So like the idea of a town hall or a community coming together or, you know, an educational thing in your community, it can all happen right here. Um, and I think that's going to be a really powerful way that we kind of take a grip back on technology and allow it to work for us instead of being, you know, succumbing to the Facebook news feed and allowing our views to be kind of formed through something like that. We can have these kinds of discussions and have diverse perspectives and listen and, and learn things from each other in, in a very connected way. So it, it, that, that is very, I think a promising feature. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing that I like, what, what I like about VR chat is it's not just um, the practical communication kind of the kind of things you're talking about. But what we're doing now that wasn't possible before is this kind of direct uh, communication about what's going on inside our brains, right? Like this this world yeah. is so fantastical, but this was in somebody's head. And now we're in that same head, <laughs> right? So like yeah. that being able to do that is this next level of communication. I think that's going to, you know, help develop yeah. this. This, this, this interaction has like a, a richness and depth to it that that definitely like is just a different i don't know it's, it adds, adds a different dimension probably literally and figuratively to our to our interactions psych order me uh, some okay. more toilet paper on amazon prime <laughs> <laughs> okay so everyone come over come over here and face the camera we'll, we're gonna take a group right, photo yeah. before we move to the next room and um, we're gonna put the high we, mind in the next room. We put we all we, of our heads together or something like. Yeah, like touch heads or, or do no, something like. I, I guess it wouldn't be much of a picture, but if we made everybody in groups and have it. If same we put all our heads yes. together, it will just be a grotesque. A, a mesh. <laughs> that will be. That will be. Yeah, we're gonna do a mesh. Yeah, everyone get as close together as possible. Five, 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 five. All right, don't cut the feed because we're going to record this next bit too. Yes.